It's finally happened. Frame generation technology has arrived on consoles, amplifying frame rates and potentially transforming experiences. What you're looking at here is the first game to support it. Ascendant Studios Immortals of Avium with frame generation delivered via an assist from Enduring Games. As the primary aim of this feature is to deliver high frame rate experiences for 120Hz display, good old YouTube with its 60fps limit isn't perhaps the best vehicle to showcase the technology, so let's half the speed of the 120fps capture to ensure every frame is seen within this video. Though if you go to our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, all captured footage in the download version of this content will present at full 120fps when played at full speed. A quick look at the frame rate chart here demonstrates that the promise has been delivered. AMD's FSR3 has been successfully ported onto the consoles and the frame rate uplift is clearly impactful. Not only that, but all consoles are supported, even Xbox Series S supports frame generation, and there's an interesting wrinkle to the story there we'll go into later. So how has this higher frame rate experience been delivered? Well, let's go back to the basics. In essence, the frame generation technique is very similar to that pioneered by NVIDIA with DLSS 3. The difference being there's no hardware tie-in here. AMD does it all with software, whereas NVIDIA demands the use of 40 series graphics cards. And the fact that it's using software means, well, it works on consoles too. Either way, the technique is very similar. Two frames are generated in succession, and then a third, an interpolated frame, is sandwiched between the two, and so it goes on. What you're getting is like a concertina effect of standard generated frames and interpolated frames, delivering that higher frame rate. In a best case scenario, you can effectively double frame rate, but more typically the gain is lower. You see, frame generation isn't free, there's a computational cost to it. The GPU needs to process the interpolated frame and that takes time. But in a purely CPU limited scenario, you may see cases where there are spare GPU cycles allowing you to basically double output frame rate, but that's not the case here in Avium. In the recent DF Direct, we showed some clips of Series X, and this particular cutscene from the beginning of Chapter 3, it's a proper stress point, and it shows a vast improvement in frame rate. On Series X, I'm looking at a 72.3% boost to frames output. More interesting is a more holistic look at gameplay. During the action, Immortals of Avium mostly runs between 40 and 60 FPS, effectively 17 to 25 milliseconds persistence per frame. And here's how gameplay looks right now. So after frame generation, we're more typically in a 70 FPS to 90 FPS window, a much tighter 11 to 14 millisecond range. That's pleasantly transformative actually, and the game allows you to toggle frame gen on and off mid gameplay with no restarts. This allows you to see and feel the difference as you please. Let's move on to PlayStation 5 now, which, par for the course these days, I guess, is much the same as Xbox Series X. Some curious variations though, base frame rate on PS5, very slightly higher than Xbox, but only to the tune of 1%, literally margin of error stuff. However, frame gen uplift is slightly lower than Xbox, 67% on PS5 plays 72 on Xbox. PlayStation does have an advantage I'll talk about shortly, uh, but the majority of gameplay is much like Xbox really. A game that runs between 40 to 60 FPS is now in a kind of more typical 70 to 90 FPS window, and that looks great on a 120Hz display, most especially if you're using VRR. Let's move on to Series S because here's where things get very interesting. So the bottom line is that the Series S has a whole host of savage visual cutbacks compared to the other consoles. It's a really unattractive game owing to a very, very low base resolution paired back effects and detail. However, bizarrely perhaps, it runs a lot, lot faster than the other versions of the game. So allow me to explain. PS5 and Series X render at 960p internally before FSR2 upscaling, but astonishingly, Series S is just 432p internally, which by my maths means that the premium consoles have something like a 4.93 times increase in overall resolution. The premium consoles are likely upscaling to 4K, while Series X is more likely to target 1080p instead. But even so, this is one of the biggest resolution divides I've ever seen. Even so, if you're a 60fps purist, well, this is as close as you're getting gameplay from all the console builds. And what that means is that the Series S version, as unattractive as it is, 
delivers the highest amplification factor via frame generation, a 78.5% boost in frame rate in our matched content. A 57.44 FPS average in this cutscene jumps to 102.5. And what this means in terms of gameplay is that this is the closest you'll get to 120 frames per second via frame generation by quite some margin. So we've established a 70 to 90 FPS experience on the premium consoles with FSR 3 frame gen on, but the junior Xbox version here typically at 100 frames per second or higher. Okay, so when we introduced DLSS 3 frame generation back in the day, we talked about the positive impact to frame rate by describing quote unquote performance increases. But by the time we got to the RTX 1490 review a short while later, we decided not to use that term going forward. I mean, the GPU is performing all of these tasks, so strictly speaking, the term performance does fit. However, the workload isn't the same as standard rendering, clearly. And more than that, typically an increase in gaming performance is backed by a lowering of latency. So basically, the faster the game, the more responsive the experience. But the opposite of that is true with frame generation, because the time taken to buffer an extra frame, along with the calculation time for the interpolated frame, has to have a negative impact on latency. So how does that manifest in the console versions of Immortals of Avium? Measuring input lag is tricky at the best of times, but we can actually use a PC technology to help us here. The NVIDIA LDAC kit consists of a mouse attached to a sensor you strap onto your display. Hook up the mouse to a compatible system and the sensor to a PC and you can log the time difference in milliseconds between a mouse button press and a flash of light captured by the sensor. Good for first person shooter games basically. And the good news is that Immortals of Avium on both Xbox consoles supports mouse and keyboard. PS5? Um, weirdly, keyboard support works, but mouse doesn't, meaning we can't test that. So there's a bit of a complication in the latency testing here, because even though we've got matched content on Series X and Series S, the base frame rates are very different, and uh, Series S, as we've established, it's faster. Without frame generation active, it's actually 23% faster on matching content, with frame gen active 27% faster than the Series X alternative. So kind of ironically perhaps, frame generation delivers the most consistently faster frame rates in both scenarios on the junior Xbox. Anyway, here's the scene we're testing for latency, a nice vista shot on both consoles. 50 FPS average on Series X, 62.2 on S. And yeah, that's 62.2 average, kind of interesting. Avium's 120Hz support arrives hand in glove with an unlocked frame rate. It can go above 60 frames per second, even without frame generation, but turn it on and here's what we get. An 85 FPS average on Series X plays 111 frames per second on S, a 31 percentage point lead in this specific example. And here are the results. What I'll say off the bat is that for a game targeting 60 FPS, the latency is very high. And part of this may well be down to view weapon animation. Even so, across 100 input lag samples taken over a 200 second period to account for variations in the scene, the difference between frame gen on and frame gen off is 8.3 milliseconds on Series X and 15.3 milliseconds on Series S. That's essentially the hits to response caused by generating an extra frame and calculating the interpolated one, at least in this scenario. I'd treat these results as indicative and nothing more, however, because I strongly suspect the cost of frame generation varies according to GPU load. AMD told us that frame generation leans into asynchronous compute, so if parts of the GPU are idle, they can be repurposed for other tasks, like frame generation, and it stands to reason that occupancy of the GPU will change according to the nature of what's being rendered at any given point. Let's quickly talk about the quality of interpolated frames, and I'm going to slow down some 120 FPS capture here so you can see the effect. Maybe a little choppy because unlike our PC tests, we can't brute force our way to a locked 120, but you should get the idea. So essentially, the nature of frame generation is that the more two standard rendered frames have in common, the fewer artifacts you'll get. The faster the movement, the less accurate interpolation becomes and the less satisfactory the image. Characters running left to right directly in front of the camera here are certainly challenging with that interesting sort of ghosting effect you see. 
Even more problematic are the crazy magic effects in this particular game from the view weapon. You should be able to easily see the interpolated frames here up against the standard rendered ones. This is why having a higher base frame rate is a good thing. AMD typically recommends a 60fps minimum, but Immortals of Avium is floating between 40 to 60fps here generally and I think it's okay. But yeah, by sandwiching standard frames with generated ones at high speed, the eye can be fooled quite convincingly. The persistence of the artifacts is very low and frames before and after are obviously of a higher quality. Less convincing are the game's troublesome HUD elements. Immortals of Avium just runs these at the base frame rate with no interpolation, which means there's a big disconnect in motion. They're essentially running at half rate. Also, transparent HUD elements are problematic as the 3D visuals beneath them are also running at half rate. Because all of these elements are persistent, this is more of a problem than the overall quality of the interpolated frames, where artifacts are kind of strobed away by that concertina effect I talked about. So basically the problem with the HUD is that it's always there and always presenting issues. Couple more notes. Immortals of Avium is quite unfortunate in that it does have traversal stutter, not just in PC but in the console versions of the game. And the problem with frame generation is that uh, the drop to performance is actually even more exaggerated because you're dropping down from a much higher frame rate. Also, VRR, variable refresh rate, is supported and it does work, which is crucial when frame rate is in the 70 to 90 FPS window we're seeing with Series X and PS5. There can be some discontinuities at times, but overall this is by far the best way to experience frame generation on those consoles. But Ascendant Studios and Enduring Games have spoiled us by including VSync On and VSync Off support for those who do not have VRR screens. Here's a four-way split showing that frame gen both on and off works with both options. This visualization also confirms that frame rate is identical whether VSync is on or off, just the pacing of those frames is different. But let's strip out the VSync on data and just look at VSync off. Frame times are broadly consistent, and as those frame times are essentially what's going to be feeding a VRR screen, which can't be fully captured with accuracy on consoles, well, it matches up with our eyeballing, where I'd say it mostly looks okay. And this is important, as frame pacing didn't work well with PC FSR 3 frame gen at launch, and while we've seen big improvements there, um, the quality of VRR and frame pacing in general seems to vary according to the system you're running it on. We've not quite figured that one out yet, but the bottom line is that consoles are fixed platforms and the delivery of frames, the pacing of them, is looking pretty good here. Good, but not perfect. What is noticeable is that on cutscene camera cuts, frame times look considerably higher than they should be, explaining some of the visual discontinuities we saw. And that leads us on to another issue with the Xbox. Uh, where sometimes camera cuts can cause massive frame time spikes. A zero FPS readout there means we're looking at pauses in excess of one second, a thousand milliseconds. I'm not seeing that in PlayStation on similar areas, but on Xbox consoles, both S and X, it is there, and I'm hopeful it should be addressed. I'm using VSync data here, but I've seen it manifest with VSync off and with VRR too. Another nitpick? Beyond frame gen on the spatial upscaling side, we aren't seeing FSR 3.1 here, so the problems Immortals of Avium has historically had with image quality remain unaddressed. The view weapon can be particularly egregious as you're seeing here. Frame generation benefits from higher quality input frames, so it's a bit of a shame that AMD's full suite of mooted upgrades on the spatial side haven't made it into this particular patch. So let's sum up, what have we learned? Okay, so I'm fine with the latency hit frame generation causes on the consoles. 8 to 15 milliseconds, it's fine. I didn't feel a huge amount of difference in gameplay and neither did John, perhaps because the input lag does change considerably, bearing in mind the fluctuating base frame rate. Beyond the HUD issues, which are constant and persistent, uh, there are some image quality issues in very, very fast moving action. And, well, I'll tell you what, Immortals of Avium is actually a great game for putting that through its paces. So it's a proper stress test we're seeing here for frame generation. But overall, though, I'd say it works. And it does mean that this is a valuable new tool for developers. 30 to 60 FPS frame generation, though, based on what we're seeing here, I don't think it's particularly viable. It's best suited to higher frame rate experiences and ideally for those with VRR displays. But maybe it could work for a slower paced game.
So that's where we are with Fame Generation on Immortals of Avium on consoles. It was a free monthly game on PlayStation Plus and it's currently on Game Pass. So if you have a 120Hz screen, which is required by the way, uh, I'd recommend you download the game, check it out and uh, see what you think. I think you might be quietly impressed. And the game, I quite like it too. Bottom line though is that the Fame Generation works. I'm impressed and I'm fascinated to see where it turns up next. And with that, I'm done. Like, subscribe, share if you're so inclined. And make use of the bell icon for the possibility of quote-unquote instant notifications whenever new DF content arrives on the channel. DF Supporter Program. Join us for bonus materials, early access, DF Direct privileges and much more. But that's all from me for now on this one. Thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.